Hello, and welcome to another BeeCheck tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at Perp's passive BeeCheck, and they might not function the way that you think they function. Uh, my first assumption was the way that these would be implemented is you create a number of passive BeeCheck, and similar to Burp's uh, passive scanning, these are running all the time, and as traffic is going through the proxy, you know, Burp is checking this traffic and it's identifying items in the requests and the responses. Um, that's not how this works. The way that this works is it is coupled with Burp's scanner. So what you need to do is create uh, a check that uh, identifies something in a request or a response, and then you need to scan what you want, where you want to look. So my initial thought when thinking about uh, what would be very helpful to implement as a passive check in Burp would be a way to look for information leakage. Uh, it's one thing that I've found historically is very easy to miss in applications that, let's say, they have a large number of analytics services that they're using, and it's pretty common actually to see that a lot of sensitive information is ex extracted <clears throat> from the application and sent to some third-party analytics service. And oftentimes, the nature of the information is such that I would consider that a reportable finding uh, as an application penetration tester. And the challenge with that is you're going to have to, with a B-check, to implement that, you're going to have to run Burp's scanner against everything you actually want to assess, as opposed to Burp just looking through the traffic and flagging all items that go through the proxy. So I think that B-checks are not a good solution for that specific problem. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be a good solution to a number of other problems. And so we're just going to look at a very simple implementation here as an example to get you started making uh, burp B-checks for passive tests. So we're going to start by creating a new B-check from a template here. As you can see, I'm under the extensions tab and then under the B-checks tab, and I'm going to click new. So. Portswigger has provided us with a template response level uh, passive check. Uh, here they're checking for the presence of AWS keys in responses, but uh, we're not going to look for that. Um, AWS keys may or may not exist in Juice Shop. If they do, I actually don't know <laughs> where they would be. So we're going to make something uh, simpler that uh, is going to light up our, our issues right away just to, to demonstrate that it's working. Uh, but we're going to start from this template. We're going to keep the language v1-beta. I'm going to change the um, the name here um, of this check. We're just going to look for X frame options, the header. As I mentioned, it's going to be very uninteresting uh, to see if there are X frame options headers present. All we're going to do is look in the response to see if the header exists. Um, it's not associated with a specific finding. Uh, we're just seeing if it's there um, just to prove that this B check works. I'm going to add an author tag here because I am making this uh, very helpful uh, B check. So diving into the logic of the B check here, given a response, then if latest.response matches, so the matches uh, here is followed by a regular expression. So in this case, we could use a regular expression, but I'm just going to throw in, uh, you know, what is effectively uh, a string uh, literal there without any regex uh, or regex magic. Um, if the latest dot response matches X frames options, so if that exists within the response content, then we're going to report a report an issue, which I'm just going to call it informational, and of course I'm going to change the naming here. Uh, identified X frame options, HTTP response header, uh, remediation, of course, it's just identifying the presence of the header, not a specific configuration. So I'm just going to say for remediation, no action needed right now. I bet I could remove remediation from this uh, and it would be fine, but I'm going to leave it for now. I click validate to make sure that it's functioning, it looks good. And then I save and close and I now have my passive B check enabled. And now all that I need to do uh, and oops, it looks like I've already run this before to prove that it worked, <laughs> but uh, forget you saw that. Pretend that it wasn't there because we're going to start over fresh. Uh, we have our target here, which I'm going to right click on and I'm going to launch a scan. I only want to use, I only want to do auditing on the existing items that exist there. And I would only like to use B checks 
Um, so I'm going to click the B checks and um, that's it. So uh, this uh, custom configuration, of course, I made in a prior video. You can make one pretty easily by uh, deselecting all of the scan items other than B checks. So this should only run that passive item. We shouldn't be sending malicious payloads to our target application uh, as we normally would when we're conducting, you know, an active scan against an app. I click OK. And there we go. The issues populate and it looks like it completed already. So we've identified the presence of the header. If I expand this, we can look at all of the examples. Uh, and it gives us great highlighting here where it highlights uh, the header that we're trying to match. Uh, if it was a larger response that we had to scroll for, we could just click the highlight button and it would zoom us in right to where that header occurs. Uh, and we can look at all the instances where it was identified. One thing that I did want to point out that is when running this and we can open up this scan uh, task right here, if you go to the logger, you will see that there is actually, even though it's a passive check, we are actually sending requests to the application. Uh, the scanner is just sending what I assume are some um, some requests to uh, identify whether these endpoints exist. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of the purpose of these because it didn't run, it didn't send a request for every item in scope, or at least it's not showing all these items. We might be excluding some, but nope. Uh, looking at the filter settings here, we're not excluding uh, any types of content, you know, we're showing all uh, items by MIME type. We're not filtering out any uh, response types. So it, it sent a number of requests still. Uh, it doesn't look like it sent any with uh, any payloads. So, you know, we're not, uh, if you want to just be doing passive tests with uh, without sending any, again, payloads to a target application, be aware that, you know, some traffic is clearly going to the app uh, as part of the scan process. But, you know, it, it isn't running the typical scan check items that are going to send cross scripting, SQL injection payloads, and so on. And that's creating a simple passive B check. Uh, this seems to be the only way to trigger these right now is to do uh, a purposeful scan against a target and to have it enabled when you do so. So if you only want, if you want to limit your testing to just passive checks, uh, that are implemented as B checks. I would recommend configuring it this way where you have all of the scan items turned off other than B checks and you're scanning what you want to run your B checks against. And that's it for uh, passive B checks. Uh, I'll see you in the next videos looking at some of the other B check features.